Hello. Uh, so right now I'm going to do a long division problem. So for example, if I want to know what 2 divided by 7 is as a decimal, what I do is I do long division. So whenever you have a fraction and you want to convert it to a decimal, you place the numerator inside the house and you place the 7 outside the house. And the first question you ask is, how many times does 7 go into 2? How many times does the denominator go into the numerator? If it's 0 times, then we place a 0, and then we perform a magical step. And that is that we place a decimal point here, and we attach one zero. And what I want you to notice is that I'm using a different color for this. And when you're learning this procedure, I recommend you do the same because it'll help you to, to do that transition uh, and symbolically in your brain think about it. So now we ask how many times does 7 go into 20? 7 goes into 20 twice because 2 times 7 is 14. And so we do 2 times 7 and we get 14. And then we do the subtraction here. 20 minus 14. Well, so 0 minus 4, we can't do that. So we borrow from the 2 a 1, and that makes it a 10. 10 minus 4 is 6. 1, one minus 1 is 0. So we, have a, so we have a 6 here. And whenever we do the subtraction, we affix another 0, but only one at a time. So we bring this new 0 down, and we get a 60 there. We ask ourselves now, how many times does 7 go into 60? And the answer is 8. Because 8 times 7 is 56. So then I say, what is 60 minus 56? Well, so 0 minus 6, I can't do it. So I borrow from this 6. That becomes a 5. And this 0 becomes a 10. 10 minus 6 is 4. 5 minus 5 is 0. Okay? I'm not going to write the 0. But now, I've done the subtraction. So I can affix another 0 here. I drop this 0 down like this, and I get 40. And I ask myself, how many times does 7 go into 40? 7 goes into 40 five times. Because 5 times 7 is 35. Okay? Then I perform the subtraction. 40 minus 35 uh, is 5. And then I affix another 0 here. I drop it, and I get 50, and I ask, how many times does 7 go into 50? Well, we know that 7 times 7 is 49, so we would answer 7. We would place a 49 here. We will perform the subtraction, which will give us 1. 50 minus 49 is 1. Then I'm going to fix a 0 here, and I'm going to drop this down like this. And it's going to become 10. Then we ask, how many times does 7 go into 10? One time. One times 7 is 7. And then we ask ourselves, how many? Uh, 10 minus 7 is what? 3. We can fix another 0 here. We drop it. We get 30. We ask ourselves, and we can, now I want you to notice something. We can continue going like this. Um, and the next logical question to ask is, um, when do we stop? Sometimes the, 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 the decimal expansion will just stop right away. Like if you do 1 over 4. Okay, if I do 1 over 4, I'm going to do this side problem here to show you how I could just terminate. Okay, if I do 1 divided by 4, well, like we saw in this problem, that would be 4 outside the house and 1 inside the house. We know that we ask ourselves now, does 4 go into 1? It does not. So I put a 0. And then, I'm going to switch colors here, just as I showed you in this problem. And I'm going to put a decimal place. And once I put a decimal point, I can affix a 0 here. And I ask myself, why? Uh, how many times does 4 go into 10? 4 goes into 10 twice. 2 times 4 is 8. And then I can ask, what is 10 minus 8? And that will be 2. Then I have fixed 1, 0. I drop it. And that gives me 20. 
I ask myself, how many times does 4 go into 20? It goes 5 times. Because 5 times 4 is 20. 20 minus 20 is 0. And so you can see that there's nothing left to do here. This terminates. Now, another possible situation is that the decimal uh, starts repeating itself. Um, and if it repeats itself, then we only have to put one, ver one, we only have to put one of the parts that repeats and then a bar over the part that repeats. Um, and there are some we won't see where it repeats because it could be very far off. Okay, yes. But all fractions will have a repetitive part. Um, yes, all fractions can be represented either as repeating decimals. Uh, yeah, okay. Now, yeah. So then we can continue here. 7 goes into 30 four times. That's 28. We subtract and we get a 2. And let's see. And I have not yet repeated. I would attach, I could attach a zero here, bring it down, then it goes into 20. Ah, here is where the repetition is going to happen. 7 goes into 20 twice, because it'll be 14. And you can see that once I do the multiplication, I'm going to be here, here, here. So this is actually the part that repeats. Okay, so I don't have to write this 2 anymore. Okay, and so in actual fact, in other words, what I'm saying is this. Okay, let me go backwards a little here. So I had just gotten a 2 here. And from what we just saw in this division problem, I was going to get a 14, because 2 times 7 is 14. I would subtract, and I would get a 6 again. That would become a 60, and then I would get, so this whole term would start reappearing. reappearing. So it would be 2, 8, 5, 7, 1, 4, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, but we could just write that as, um, so I'm going to write it here for you in a different color, just so you can see this, as 0.28. Five, seven, one, four, with a bar. The bar indicates that that whole piece repeats over and over again. And one of the other things that I want to point out about this is another place that we would want to. Uh, another so the other question is, um, okay, so it could stop, it could repeat, but do we really have to do the whole digit thing like I saw, like you, like you did here, David? And the answer is no, because of course you might want to stop for purely practical reasons. It might be the case that you want to compare two numbers, and you only need one or two decimal places uh, to compare those two numbers, and so you would just stop be as a pra uh, because it's a practical it's a practical problem, and you only need was one or two decimal places to distinguish between two numbers, or um, maybe you're doing a do-it-yourself project at home, and you don't need to have like if let's say this were inches, you don't need to have like you know the twentieth digit of the division for your, you know, for how many parts of an inch you need. Maybe you just need the first decimal place or the second decimal place, quarter of an inch, or maybe, yeah. So, but for all practical purposes in that case, just, you know, two decimal places is enough. It all depends on what you're going to use the long division for. Thank you for watching.